It has been a busy three days at Apple. We got many new M4 Max. This is one of the most exciting product in some time. And I decided to put together all my thoughts into this one conference video to save both of our time. Cause I'm also traveling a lot right now. So I'll be sharing those with you. If you're thinking about pre-configuring a machine, you're not really sure what component upgrade to get the maximum performance per dollar you're going to spend. I will also have an upgrade priority list to share with you. And lastly, we'll talk about the test machine that I'm ordering into the studio so you'll know what I'll be playing with in the next coming weeks. There's a lot to talk about. Let's jump right into it. This is Artis Right. I also want to share with you that I have been retesting and I'm doing majority of retesting on the M1 to the M3 generation. I've also made some tweak and changes to the testing methodology and I'll share that in a separate video but I think it's gonna be really exciting and you're gonna find that the tests are gonna be much more comprehensive now. So with that in mind, a couple of things I do wanna mention about Apple Silicon is that, especially in a laptop, whether I'm running it on battery or on power, plug in or not, I don't have to go in and change the setting to high performance. The performance is exactly the same. It makes it easier to test. And this also applies to desktop as well when we're comparing the Apple Silicon from laptop to desktop, the performance are pretty much within a margin of error of each other. And this is going to lay the mindset to what I'm going to talk about later on too, because I'm not gonna get every single variance of the 14 and 16 inch machine in. There are certain machines we're not gonna be testing. You're gonna find that out soon. But this is also a segue into talking about 14 and 16 inch model too, MacBook Pro. If you have a Max on inside, you know, we hear conversations about this all the time. Oh, it's going to thermal throttle. I'm going to go to 16 because and of that. For best recommendation I can share with you is choose the one that best fits with your career workflow, your lifestyle, what you want to do with your laptop. Because for example, myself, I'm a photographer and I also do video. So when I travel, I carry a lot of gear. A 16 inch laptop, it's good, but it's also very heavy. And I also have a powerful Mac desktop at home. So if I just need a machine to just get me through while I'm on my trip, sometimes getting a 14 inch one or even, you know, just like a MacBook Air can do the job just fine. So that's just something to think about there. But if this is going to be your primary machine, I would still consider the 14 and 16 inches based on your use case. And don't worry so much about the thermal throttling and all those things. It doesn't really make too much of a difference. And you're gonna see that from my testing too, when I throw thousands of raw files at it, because it's not that easy to do. Machine definitely does heat up. As I usually say in all my videos, I can't test every single memory configuration, especially now there are so many. So most of the time we're gonna be sticking with stock configuration. But the nice thing about this this time around is that the base model on all of them starts at 16 gigabytes of memory with the Pro, I believe starting at 24 and 36 on the Mac. So any of the stock configuration will do just fine. However, memory is still one of the more important components to really consider if you wanna get the most performance out of your machine. And one last thing I wanna quickly mention is that it has been a few days since the pre-order announcement and these machines are still going to be available on day one, especially many stock ones. In fact, you can go in and customize some of these machines and they're still going to be available on day one, which is really awesome. This is very different than the M1 Pro M1 Max generation about four years back when it was just really hard to get. If you really go in and custom order a machine, sometimes it takes three to five months to even get one. All right. The first thing that I do want to talk about in the buyer's guide is to look at the SOC segmentation. There's the consumer leaning one and the pro oriented. I've talked about this in the previous videos that I've launched. And in general, the consumer leaning one is going to be able to get the job done, although it may be a little bit slower. And if you start to upgrade the components in the consumer leaning one, for example, RAM, you're going to be within a striking distance price wise to the more pro oriented SOC that you're going to get a much better machine overall. You get something that works faster and have better longevity. So these are the things to really think about. The other thing that I will point out too is that Looking at just the consumer leaning M1, comparing it to the M3 generation and many of the other pro oriented chip, they were doing just fine with the M3 generation. However, with the new OS, with the newer apps that are on the market and the M4 generation being out, they're not performing quite as well anymore. And in many instances on the M1 machine, both the laptop and desktop, there are certain tasks from certain apps that it just can't finish because it's taking way too long. The app keeps crashing. It just doesn't really work quite as well anymore. So if you do create a work for revenue, 
definitely spring for the Pro, the Max, or the Ultra. And when it comes to photography workflow, I would argue that with many of the apps now utilizing the GPU that's on the system, that sometimes considering getting the Max is going to be a worthwhile investment because you are going to get a much faster machine relative to what you're gonna get with the Pro. Now with that said, let's quickly talk about the upgrade priority. The first thing that I would tell anyone to do to get the most performance out of the money you're gonna spend is the amount of RAM on your system. Granted, everything start with at least 16 gigabytes of memory now, and that is a great thing. However, one thing that we need to realize is that if you're using a lot of Adobe apps or even other ones, they consume a lot of memories. And if you wanna have a machine that runs faster, that would be the first thing that I would consider upgrading. Secondly would be, if you're gonna upgrade the memory, I would consider the chip family. This would be the M4, M4 Pro, or the M4 Max, as of now anyway. So I would consider jumping from one family to the next first, not the variants, not the particular, if you go in and spend 200 extra dollars, you can get two more CPU and four more GPU. I'm not talking about that. That comes at the very last in number four. So number three, will be upgrading the SSD storage size. For the M4 generation, 256 is really not enough for a pro workflow. I would recommend at least 512. The comfortable number for me would be one terabyte SSD. That's my personal number that I can't live with anything less, but if you're okay with 512, that's something you should work with, but I don't think anyone in the Creative Pro should work with less than that because you gotta think about it. If you load a lot of apps in, they're going to get stored on that SSD. If you, run those apps and it runs out of memory on the system is going to start writing, start caching, start swapping to the SSD. And you want to make sure that you still have room to swap on the SSD and not system running out of memory and running out of disk space to do a swap. So those are the things to think about. And lastly, like I said, the least value you can get for your money upgrading the machine is to upgrade the variants because you're spending quite a bit, like $200 sometimes, many times there's $300 to get a few more cores and the performance are gonna be really close to what you're gonna get with the base variants for each one of those. And that's just from experience. So something to think about, but here's your upgrade priority. So let's talk about the Mac that we got. There's an iMac. It comes in nice new shade of color. All the keyboards and mouse are now USB-C. You still charge the mouse from the backside. And if you take a look at Apple pre-order page, they still built this up as good, better, best. So we get the base one with only two Thunderbolts USB 4 ports, where if you spend a little bit more money, what you do get on those is four Thunderbolt ports and also gigabit ethernet on the power adapter. Those are really neat for the good, better, best, or the better and the best option. The other thing too is the iMac is the only variant in the M4 that has the eight CPU, eight GPU. Everything else has been 10 CPU, 10 GPU. So just something to note there. And going back to the conversation we have earlier about the machine performance being the same and everything, I don't generally consider these iMac a pro-oriented machine. Can you use it for it? Yes, but if you're really doing pro workflow, these are not gonna do that good of a job. And if you wanna know how these M4 are gonna perform, well, I have the Mac Mini coming in the studio and the performance are gonna come really close to this. So if you wanna know how those are gonna perform, I would just look at the numbers from the Mac Mini in general. So when it comes to the Mac Mini, there are two of them that I have coming into the studio. One of them is this one with 16 gigabytes of memory and 512 gigabyte SSD, because I already mentioned that 256 is not enough for me. So I'm getting one of these into the studio, and the other one that I'm getting is the M4 Pro, and this is just a standard configuration starting at 24 gigabytes of memory now. I mean, that is just really awesome. But what I'm gonna do now, though, is let's go in and start with the mid-tier one. And let's upgrade this to 24 gigabytes of memory and let's take a look at this compared to a M4 Pro. So if you can see right now, the price there's like about $400 variation. I would still argue that if you don't need a lot of power, sure, the M4 is gonna do just fine. However, if again, if you're doing any type of work for revenue, creative work, and you're making money from it, just definitely spring for the extra $400. It's going to make the most sense. The next thing up though to consider is that you have the option to upgrade the M4 Pro ship with two extra CPU, four extra GPU for $200. You're gonna see very little gain from this. And we're gonna be testing this ship variance, the upgraded one in a 16 inch MacBook Pro variety of those. But you can see with, for instance, the Mac Mini, you can jump up to 48 and 64 gigabytes of memory. And you don't have the 32 gigabyte option like what you have in the Mac Mini. So something to think about there, there's kind of like some lockstep happening, but 
nonetheless, this is something to consider. And lastly, we are going to talk about the MacBook Pro, which is pretty much going to be kind of like the center of the conversation here. So let's start out with the 14 inch variety. The 14 inch one that I have coming in the studio, I have just the regular M4 coming in. And the one that I got for the regular M4 is literally just the base configuration. 16 gigabytes of memory, 512 gigabyte SSD. This lines up with majority of the, of the other M1, M2, and M3s that I have in the studio or really close to each other. So we're going to be testing that. Now, as far as the Pro, I actually also order just a regular base M4 Pro into the studio. So this is the configuration there. We're not upgrading anything. We're not upgrading to the two more cores, four more GPU one. We're just going with this base configuration. We're going to see how it's going to perform. Now, when it comes to this upgraded 14 core GPU, 20 core GPU one, well, this is going to come into the studio in form of a 16 inch MacBook Pro. So we're going to do that. So in the 14 inch one, we're not going to be comparing apples and apples under 14, but like I said before, the performance are going to be within the margin of error each other. And we have seen this across numerous generations already that this, I don't feel that it's going to be that huge of a difference. Like we've seen, you know, like very similar to what we've seen in previous generation. They're going to be so close. And lastly, when it comes to the max one, what I have is both 16 inch coming into the studio. So the max one 16 inch would be these two variants. There will be the 14 core CPU, 32 core GPU, and this one with 48 gigabytes of memory coming into the studio. So we'll be doing some comparison between those. Now you're going to notice this comes with a $500 price delta. This is very similar to the M3 generation. And what that really comes down to is as follows. Now, also, the nice thing about these is you can now do nano texture display. You can also do that on the iMac too, but you can see that when we go in and upgrade the base Mac to the top Macs, and by the way, I'm referring to base and top base on the ship itself, not on the laptop or anything like that. So just know the terminology I'm using. You can see that you're forced into doing two upgrades. So you're doing the upgrade on the ship for $300, but you're also upgrading the memory because this upgraded one will only run on 48 and not 36, similar to what we've seen before. Something interesting to note there. I also forgot to mention one more thing that the 14 inch MacBook Pro M4, just the regular vanilla M4 now comes with three USB ports or three Thunderbolt ports, very similar to the MacBook Pro. It's just that the M4 Pro and M4 Max come with Thunderbolt 5, which have more display support. So that's just something to think about. Like I said, one thing about the Thunderbolt 5 is that it's really great to have those extra headroom. However, majority of accessories out there in the market today are just really Thunderbolt 4 and Thunderbolt 5 is just really starting to come out. Now, in all these things that we talk about, one of the things that have come up in conversation or I've seen people asking about this is memory bandwidth and they're comparing between this generation memory bandwidth to the previous generation. I'm going to tell you right now that in my time testing, we don't really have an app right now currently in the market that can really go in and utilize the full memory bandwidth on these systems. So I would just choose based on your need case, based on just the amount of memory and everything you're going to need. And don't worry about the memory bandwidth. It's a number to be aware of, to know that it exists, to know that it can run that fast. But there's really no app right now that can go in and saturate a CPU, GPU, a neural engine, and all the memory at the same time because Here's another thing too. In this latest generation of Adobe software, for example, Lightroom Classic version 14 and up, Adobe have gone in and taken out the usage of MPU for AI processing again, because there are some quality issues when they're using the NPU for processing and they prefer to get better quality for a slight time in gain when you're really trying to run those tasks. This is the same thing that other companies have been finding out too. For example, um, DxO Pure Raw is doing the same thing, whereas running the tasks on a GPU instead of on the NPU. So those are just kind of things to really think about where we're not really going to be fully saturating and that's number that you can just totally ignore. Now, I'm sure there are things I'm going to miss, but those are my thoughts overall on the machine that we've ordered in the studio, including a buying guide for this M4 generation. I hope that you find it helpful. If you have any questions or comment, please leave them in the comment section and give this a like, subscribe and hit the bell you're new. I'm Art and I thank you for your time. Also make sure you subscribe too because I'm going to release a video with regards to the new testing methodology that I think you're going to love finding out. All right, I'll see you later.